Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. John Radigan here, and it's the big man, number 61, Nate Newton, joining me again as always. It is another edition of the program that Niagara so kindly brings to us, Nate. It's another round of Let Me Tell Let You me Something tell with you Nate something. Newton, yeah. Big John, big playmaker, all-time Ranger fan. Yes, sir. I'm excited, man. Okay. Tell me what has been happening with the Rangers. Look at what I'm wearing. Sporting the colors here. Got 44 <laughs> on the back. That's my that's that's my okay. hero. Uh, uh, Hank Aaron is my hero. So, uh, and, hey, I'm wearing the wow. colors today because the Rangers are going to the World Series. It, it was unbelievable what they did in games six and game seven in Houston after what happened in game five. It was one of those soul crushing losses, <laughs> Nate. It was one of those losses where you're like, I'm not sure they can come back from this. I remember, it, like game six in 2011, when they were two, one strike away two different times from winning the World Series, there was no way they could win game seven the next night. Right, right. Mark McLemore and I were doing the show. He told me, he goes, dude, they ain't winning tomorrow night. And I'm an optimist. You know, I'm like, come on, man, yeah. they can still win. They, no, they ain't, they ain't winning tomorrow. That's what Friday felt like. Fortunately, there was a little time. There was a day in between, um, two days, actually. No, one day, one day, just Saturday yeah. in between. They had time to settle things down, get back to who they are. They won that game six, and then they pounded the Astros in game seven, man. And, and Corey Seager got it started in such a huge way, Nate, because that pitcher that they were facing, Christian Javier, mm -hmm. His thing is the high fastball. They know it, and in game three, they couldn't do anything about it. He got them in game three. Man, in game six, second batter of the game, four, I mean game seven this was, second batter, fourth pitch, Corey Seager got on top of it, right? That fastball is like, maybe not here, but it's up here, right? <laughs> Corey Seager swings, and he gets his bat on top of it, we call it, and it just went 440 feet. And then can you, can you go went, through that again? Where, where did it go, Rand? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's here. And then, and and then got yeah, his you got to get your bat on top of it. Yeah, you had to get up high to get that, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so he got his bat on top of it. It went 440 feet. And then the, the coolest thing and the most unusual thing for this entire season was that then Corey Seager went into the dugout. Now, I don't know that. Troy, it was exactly like this. But in your world, Troy was much more serious, much more stoic, right, yes. on the field. Yeah. You you and Michael Irvin, you know, and others, but you guys especially, you were having fun. You Madden's giving you turkey legs after the <laughs> right, game. Right, You're right. laughing and having fun. Troy's like, yeah. that's Corey Seager, right? Adolis Garcia's flipping his bat and stuff. Uh, uh, Corey Seager is stoic. Right. He's just, let's get the job done. We got another game to play, you know, whatever. Right. So, but after that home run, man, he went crazy in the dugout with his teammates. And they all said afterwards that fired us up so much that he was that excited. Yes. And that really helped propel them to the victory in game seven. So, man, it, it was a thing of beauty, Nate. It, it just, it just reminded me that year where, we, we barely got into the playoffs after we had 11 sacks. Then we got into the playoffs. Yeah. Then that next year, Troy, you know, went out of character. We was playing against the Philadelphia Eagles, and he wanted that last touchdown, and we got it. And, you know, I Troy like that threw his little, you know, what up. And, and man, it just – and it propelled us the rest of that season, man. Yeah. And we went on to the yeah. our first Super Bowl. I, I'm just telling you, 
like this, my friend. When you have a guy of that, that nature that you just spoke on, when you see him let loose with emotions, man, it just frees everybody else. Hey, now we can play. Now we can be the best we can be. And so, uh, wow, I just, uh, I'm, I'm not, a, like I say, uh, when I was in the baseball deeply, like these fans here are rooted in the baseball, uh, the Braves were my team. I can't tell you who they who they got. Uh, I know they've been good the last few years, but yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I tell you like this here, man, just to see the changing of the stadium, you know, and how I saw all these fans, especially out here in Wiley, just buying these seat backs and covers and all got on. And and now it's it, it, you know, and I was just talking to Spencer, one of our producers of this show, and one of our owners talking about it's so good to see these hanger owners spending all their money. I don't care. Playoff, like Chuck Cooperstein say, playoff anything beats regular season anything. And, and oh, yeah. you know, and the the Rangers have re, – re, thanks to the Rangers, we went through the 49ers disaster. We went through barely beating the Chargers. <laughs> Thank you, Rangers, because you took some of that heat off of these guys. And, uh, man, it, I, we got to give thanks to certain guys, man. I mean, not, not – not, Okay, we and we will get his thanks again here in about six or seven more games because whoever they're gonna play Phillies or the Diamondbacks, I don't know. Uh, Diamondbacks, yeah, uh, Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks. Yep. Okay, yeah. So now, before we get into the whew, the World Series, the Super Bowl of baseball, baby, who we giving thanks to, Rad? Who who we reaching out and saying, hey man, great job, great patience, uh, way to make this move, and what what move made the season? What Move made the season Ooh. first. Oh, good. Here's the here's the line of the season, Nate. Yes. The line of the season was uttered hundreds of times, maybe more, by Chris Young, the general manager, mm-hmm. who said when he acquired, you know, Max. I mean, when he actually back when he acquired Jacob Degrom okay. in the off season, and Nathan Avaldi mm-hmm. and Andrew Heaney, and they got an Atlanta Brave on. Uh, a waiver kind of claim that they he was hurt all year. They didn't even end up using. But anyway, he got like four pretty big name pitchers right. in the off season, last off season. And we asked him about. It, he said, "You can never have enough pitching. Never. You can never, never have enough pitching." Right. So then, you know, Degrom sadly gets hurt. Tommy John surgery. Uh, you know, everybody else was doing okay. Heaney started great. Evaldi picked up for Degrom after the surgery. Mm. Well, then he starts to get tired, and then Heaney starts to fade a little bit. Trade deadline comes. What happens? He gets more pitching. Right. Goes out and gets Max Scherzer. Right. Goes out and gets Chris Stratton. Right? Right, right. He got more pitching. You can never have enough pitching. And the reality is, as we go into the World Series right now, the Rangers only have two. Uh, Jordan Montgomery. How could I not mention Jordan? Right. That was the biggest acquisition right. of the season. Um, we only have two pitchers right now that you feel super comfortable about, and that is Jordan Montgomery mm. and Nathan Evaldi. Right. Here's the good news. We only got to win four games <laughs> out of the seven. Right, right. In a seven-game series, you let those two pitch at the beginning because the Rangers took care of business, and then there's a couple more games where somebody else pitches. Okay, whatever. Maybe the maybe the Diamondbacks win those. Well, maybe the Diamondbacks the end, take over, huh? Maybe. Yes. But even if they win, at the end, who do you have? You got those two again, Jordan Montgomery and Nathan Evaldi, and that will be unbelievable, uh, you know, if they're able to win it with only two. You feel like you need at least three for a seven-game series. And look, Max Scherzer, what a warrior. What a a bulldog. He's got football mentality, Nate, because, you know, he was supposed to be out for two months. And he was out throwing like within a week of when he had this shoulder injury. And he's back. He pitched, you know, okay in game three. He pitched better, you know, the other night in game seven. And so if he pitches in the World Series, which we presume he will, he'll be better still. And he is a guy who has done it before. Been there, done that. He's 40 years old. He knows what it takes, man. Okay. The amazing thing about this is, is the way you're talking, you, you, you're expecting this thing to go seven. Yeah, it's, well, I'm not necessarily, okay. no, I'm really not because, uh, I think that, uh, I think that the Rangers really are, are you know, if they're never going to say it. I think they'd be happy that the Diamondbacks are the team that made it through as opposed to the Phillies. I think, you know, it's one of those things in baseball. Look, the Braves had the best record 
in baseball right, right. and lost in their first round, right? Mm. The Orioles had the second best. They had the best record in the American League, and they lost in their first round. The Dodgers lost <laughs> in their first round. No, in fairness, the Dodgers got swept by the Diamondbacks. Right. So, you know, somehow Torrey Lavello and the Diamondbacks have kind of put it together as Bruce Bochy and and the Rangers have. If you'd have said back in, in September, beginning of September, the Rangers were like four and sixteen mm. in a twenty game stretch there, right? right? And they were in third third place in the division. They were two games behind the um, Mariners and three behind the Astros. And I was thinking at the time and saying, you know, not publicly right. but out loud to friends and stuff, man, I don't think these guys are gonna make the playoffs after the great year they had. I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs. And here they are in the World Series. Wow. So health and 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 a little bit of luck, but being uh, but just staying consistent in who you are and believing in your yeah. system. Yeah, yeah, and health is huge. Health is huge because at that point, at that point, I think uh, Josh Young and Nathan Evaldi had just come back from the injured list, and Adolis Garcia had just gone on the injured list wow. there in that that series against the Astros at the beginning of September when they were struggling so bad. And um, fortunately, Adolis healed quickly, and Josh and Nathan came back from the injury. And it, it, look, it took while, it took a little while. It takes a while to get your timing, even if you're healthy. The timing in baseball is so important. It took them both a little while to get their timing back, but but they look good. They look normal, and they look great. And um, so yeah, you're right, absolutely about health. But then when we get to the offense, Nate. That's where you're right about staying consistent, because what they had done in, in that stretch when they weren't playing as well is they had begun to um, maybe press a little bit. For whatever reason, they were expanding the strike zone. You've got to go up to the plate with uh, an approach and you've got to stay in your approach. Right. You've got to stay within yourself. You've got to follow the <laughs> game plan. And it's so amazing because you've got to follow it each and every at bat. You know, you'll hear guys come back and go, oh, man, dude, you were three for four. Yeah, but that one was a terrible at bat. Right, oh, right. gosh, that was a terrible at right. They know if they were chasing, right? They know if they weren't patient. They know if they didn't stick to their approach during one single at bat, especially this time of year, it can doom you. Right, right. And so they've they've done a really good job of doing that. So do you think, you know, like for us it was the 49ers, do you think now that they've gotten past this beast called the Astros, now they just can fly free i mean because when we beat the 49ers and you know our, our first year into this uh deep into the playoffs into the nfc ch uh, championship game the super bowl to us is like you know what it, it, we just got to play the game because this thing is over do you think the rages feel that way or can it be that way or baseball is totally different no i think there's a little bit to that nate this year especially now um when the rangers made the world series in 2010 they beat the evil empire, right? The right, New York right. Yankees to get there. And they play, ironically, they played the Giants, who were managed by Bruce Bochy in 2010. But I think when they got to that World Series, they were like, hey, we won the World Series. Right. We beat the Yankees, right. right? They didn't have quite the right attitude there. I think this, and they got beat, you know, by the, by the Giants in that 2010 series. I think this time, first of all, Bochy won't let them have that approach, right? You're playing with house money now, dude. Right. You can like you did in 52-17, right, right? right? You guys went out and just played free. I think these guys are going to have that mentality, especially given who they're facing, right? right. If they're facing the Dodgers, right, mm -hmm. or even the Braves, some of these teams that had won one recently or won more than one recently, you know, they might be a little more intimidated by the process, by the team, by the opponent. There's no intimidation here, man. The, the you know the Diamondbacks weren't expected to be here. They're here, um, and, and good for them. But man, it, it, they're 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 going to be so fired up. I think the Rangers got a really good chance to win this series. Wow, wow. I just you know so ownership. Uh, it took a, it took a little time. I mean, and they yeah, they yeah. they cut it down to the bone a couple of years and kind of caused Mr. John Daniels his job because they cut it down to the bone yep. a little bit. And uh, then they bring in Mr. Chris Young, and and then they start spending a little money. So 
it gave him a little freedom to do things. And we want to say thank you to ownership first and to, you know, Mr. Daniels and brother uh, uh, Chris. But boy, the fans, I'm, I'm, I'm telling yeah. you, uh, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm, you know, I'm about the, I'm about the fans. I'm about guy. I'm about people who put their money where their mouth is. And I mean, do it year in and year out. I mean, uh, it's like I'm a cowboy fan year in and year out. I mean, and it, and it hurts when you don't get there. It hurts, but I'm not. I'm a realist, you know. Like I was trying to tell the, the Ranger fans four or five years ago, hey man, they kind of trying to rebuild. Be patient. Uh, I'm telling the Cowboys, uh, you need one or two more players, brother, before you can 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 reach that level of uh, talking about a Super Bowl. And uh, I think, Coach. Uh, yeah, uh, your manager broke. I want Bo- Bochy. Bo- Bo- I want to Bo- I mess yep. up names. You know, I chop up a name in a minute, <laughs> Mr. Boch. I think <laughs> he's the guy to say, "Hey, this is the step we at now. Let's live in this life." And uh, I try to yeah. get cowboy fans to, you know what, live in this life. Just cause the the Astros is the perfect example of domination during the regular season to overcome that in the playoffs where the 49ers dominated the Cowboys this regular season. Now you, you got to build back up. You got to continue to play. He's got to continue to play. That's the great thing about basketball and, and baseball, 82 one, for one sport, 162 for the other sport. You learn how to uh, forget quick and you learn how to uh, adjust quickly and play for the next day. And that's what baseball and basketball give you. Whereas football, you have about six or seven bad games of football. You out of the, you may be out of the running. You know what I'm saying? You have four or five bad baseball games. People be like, it's hey, it happens in baseball. It happens in basketball, but it can't happen in football. No, no, it's so true. And, And you mentioned John Daniels and in fairness, they actually did begin spending still under his watch. Right. You know, he was the one who helped bring uh, Simeon and Seeger right. and John Gray all here. Uh, so, you know, and, and uh, Chris Young, uh, when he was interviewed after the game seven in Houston, mm-hmm. gave lots and lots of credit to John Daniels. And John deserves a lot of credit. And I know he's a polarizing figure in Dallas Fort Worth. You know, some people love him. Some people hate him. Um, a lot of Welcome people think the he's the life, responsible. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. And uh, a lot of people think he's responsible for the departure of, of Nolan right. Ryan. There, there was a, they didn't have the best relationship in the world, but there's a lot more to it than just right. that. You know, so, um, and anyway, and Nolan's uh, been back in the fold for a couple of years, not as active as he was, but he's, you know, he's, we're selling Nolan Ryan hot dogs at the ballpark for goodness <laughs> sake. So that's all. Hey, that's what Nolan wants. you yeah. know. So anyway, they, um, they are, uh, th- 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 he was helpful, responsible in a large way of setting this path. And Chris Young worked under him for a couple of years. Yes. And Chris Young, Chris Young did not want to see him uh, let go. He was surprised as anyone that JD was let go. At, in August of last year, just a couple of days after JD let go of Chris Woodward. Wow. So um, anyway, look, it's, uh, you know, he's, he's partially responsible for this success. He doesn't care if he gets any of the credit, but he should. And good. He sh- I don't know that he should care, but he should get some of the credit right. and, and good for him. But, but Chris Young's done a great job. Uh, Bruce Bochy is unbelievable. He's one of those men that, like lowers the heart rate of every person in the room or the dugout or the sideline, right? He just like, calm down. It's okay. Been here before. We'll handle this. No problem. You know, and it's legit when it comes from him, man. He just, he's been there so often. He knows how to do it. And it's really a huge factor in, in um, what they've accomplished and what they've achieved already. And it'll continue throughout the world series. Just, just, you know, and I know we, we'll talk a little bit about football, but, who is the guy they're going to see first the, for the Diamondbacks? Who is the pitcher they will see? It? Tell me yeah. a little bit about him if you can. Yeah, it's Zach Gallen, and he is nails, man. He is ridiculously good. He is a d- very, very difficult matchup. <laughs> me, if, if I'm – he's and he's tough for everybody, right? right? If, I'm, if I'm setting the rotation, I uh, would probably – put Jordan Montgomery first for the Rangers right. and follow him with Nathan Evaldi. One, Jordan Montgomery has been 
almost perfect throughout the playoffs. Two, that way, if there is a Game 7, and I know in Game 7 all hands are on deck, but if there is a Game 7, you're starting that game with Nathan Evaldi. And Nathan Evaldi is is the guy that has that um, playoff history, right, and right. He, his his breadth of playoff work is so great because he was with those Red Sox teams that went to the World Series. So uh, he knows he knows what he's won one with the Red Sox. He lost one with them too. So he knows what it takes uh, to to you know succeed right there at that most critical level. So look, the Rangers will have their hands full with Zach Gallon. But I tell you this, the Diamondbacks are going to have their hands full with either Montgomery or Valdi, whichever way Bruce Bochy and Mike Maddox decide to go in that re- in that regard. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, just uh, excitement. You know, uh, I, I, see, th- this is what I tell people a lot of a lot of times, like uh, I don't like traveling around the world. I'm not a world traveler. But if you if you come to me, say, man, I just come back from from Africa. I just come back from Brazil and you telling the story, I'll be hyped. And people be like, did you go to, have you been there? I'll be like, nah, I'm hyped <laughs> yeah. because you hyped. Yeah. I, and I, yeah. and that's one thing coach Johnson knew about me that oh, if I get Nate hyped, Nate going to get everybody hyped. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he always <laughs> gave me a little bit of rope. Who is that guy in that locker room that Coach mm. uh, Manager Bochy gives that that's living a leeway to be that that kind of different guy? There is no doubt about the fact that it is Adolis Garcia who um, is you know he breaks the unwritten rules of baseball right. on almost a daily basis, <laughs> and right and those unwritten rules right. because that because they're unwritten. They're ever changing. Right. And I think, you know, Adolis is going to help be responsible for changing those unwritten rules. Because um, what he's done is he has thrown, you know, caution to the wind right. when it comes to celebrating, right? The old school guys say if you hit a home run, you know, you can't show up the pitcher right. by celebrating right. too much. Well, Adolis, <laughs> after that home run that he hit in game in game five, right, right. you know, he walked down the first baseline and he threw the bat like he didn't flip it. He threw it on the ground and he went to his teammates in the dugout. Right. right. So you can't do that. And that is, by the way, that's why they hit him. Right. There's no question about that. I don't care if there was a runner on first base. They hit him. You know, uh, uh, Brian Abreu hit him right, right. because he wanted to say, we don't like the way you reacted, right? He was going old school. And a lot of the old school people were like, that's the way you do. That's the way you do. Now we got to hit one of them. We you know? that, uh... Oh, I promise you. So they, um, that's why they hit him. And so, and there was that huge debate about, well, maybe why? Because baseball logic dictates in a two-run game, you're not going to put the winning run to the and bring the winning run to the plate right. by hitting a batter and having two runners on base. They don't. They didn't care about logic at that point. All they cared about was, but this see, guy he showed got us out of character, and that helps you win. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's, that's what true. we could do and, sometime when when I play. You know, and that's what I try to tell you. You got consistency, Troy. Emmett, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Tony yeah. Tobert, those are your consistent guys. Then you got your nutcases, Nate Newton, <laughs> Charles Haley, <laughs> you know, Kevin Irvin. Gogan. You know what I'm saying? We go th- because we we ready to we ready to go, bro. If you want to laugh about it, we'll laugh about it. If you want to throw some hands, we go throw some hands. You know? So yeah, I love uh, that. Man, I, 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 see, teams are not just made up of. Uh, you know, the Troy Aikman's. Our team's not made up the happy guy, Nate Newton. You know, teams have that guy who's stork and always about business that you can lean on. Then you got that guy down at the bottom of the pole like Nate. You better watch Nate. You don't know what he's going to do tonight. You don't know what prank he's going to pull, yeah. Kevin Gogan. So, you yeah. and then we had all the guys in between. And uh, it yeah. builds a team. And today's sport, it started with the Cowboys, is it's not about can you coach, but can you manage talent? Ask, ask Phil yep. Jackson, you know, you know, yep. <laughs> Phil, he, his greatest job asset was he managed talent. When you can yep. manage personalities and talent, and this is what this coach has done. That's why Chris brought him in because he can allow you to be you 
As long as you stay up under the criteria of baseball first. As long as you kept football first, that was Jimmy. Football first. These yeah. are my basic rules. Nate, if you're on time, if you study, you do your work, you handle your business, you can be Nate. But if you neglect any of those three or four, you won't even be on the team. We won't even know you, Nate. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. And and that's exactly where they are with the Dullies. And, and to your point about the Troys and the Emmets and the Tony right. Tolbert. So uh, we talked already about how Seeger went out of character right. to try and fire the guys up in game seven. It was way back at the All-Star game. Corey Seeger was asked about the team and he likes talking about anybody like a lot of athletes. Right. He doesn't like talking about himself. He likes talking about other people. So they asked him at the All-Star game when he was up on the podium. Hey, um, you know, tell us about your teammates. Who's, who's your favorite teammate? And he said, Adolis Garcia. He is so emotional. He brings so much emotion right. to the team. He fires us all up. That's he's, Corey said, that's not me. I don't do it that way, but that's how he does it, and I love him. And I think that, too, like that empowered Adolis right. a little bit because you probably wonder, here's this dude. I'm going crazy, throwing my bat, you know, smiling with everybody, <laughs> dancing, everything else. And you're looking at old Corey Seager, and he's like, yeah. yeah. Right? And he's like, yeah. I wonder if that guy even likes what I do. Well, he knew. He knew then. He said, I, that's my favorite. I love Adolis Garcia. And so that's who that guy is. And um, there are others. There are others on the team that, you know, to your point, that are like him, like Adolis, but, but he's the guy that you just, um, you follow. Uh, and, and, and then so is Corey Seager. I mean, you know, you, you guys took lots of cues from Troy, yes. even though he was much more stoic yes. and they all took lots of cues from you, even though you were the opposite end of the spectrum and you, maybe you need just absolutely need both. The only time I was serious is when I hit that field. That's, yeah. that, you know, people like, you know, because, you know, I was going to give you one off size a game. <laughs> so I, had, <laughs> I had to be thinking. I had to be old because that's where that's where you made your bread, man. That's where you broke bread with your with your fellow players. That's where you showed the world who you really was. And this is what the Rangers have put their seventh position. You I, I tell people uh, a lot of people talk about Super Bowls and all this, but you was with us, John. It ain't but. To, at the end, it's two teams, and the world yeah. is watching. The yep. world is watching. You, you can have the greatest pitcher, but if he's sitting at home, you right now have a chance to put a bat in your hand or to throw a ball down down the fast lane. You're going to be that guy for those six or seven games or those five games. you going to be that guy. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's how awesome. I looked at it, man. When I went to the to the uh, super uh, to the Super Bowls in two or three years, I used to I used to say in my mind, I would never. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. This guy, yeah, he's sitting home. He he made all yeah. pro. Yeah, but look at me. I'm Nate Newton. I'm in, I'm this God that's here with these two games left. You know what I mean? Me and my dad that's got into an argument, man. About son, it's just good to make it to the Super Bowl. No, no pops. I love you. It's good to win the Super Bowl. If you win a Super Bowl, ain't nothing in the world sweeter. Because the next year, and the way things change now, it's hard to remember last year's Super Bowl winner. So you're not, you know, you ain't gonna. Yeah. I say the only way Buffalo got uh, known is because they won, lost four. Yeah. That's the only way everybody can, yeah. can remember Buffalo. Man. Yeah. The eight. Yeah. No, it, you. You got to win, and it, these days it's super hard to win more than one in a row, yes. right? Oh. I mean, it's re, I mean, you guys repeated, and you know, if it hadn't been for the turmoil of the of coaching change and everything, you might have four peated. You might have four peated. Wow. You, you dang near three. You won three out of four, right? But but this day and age, man, that's hard, and nobody's done it in baseball uh, since way back in. 2000 yeah. like uh, when the yankees did it in like 99 2000 something Empire, like that it's man. the longest stretch yeah it's the longest stretch where we've not had anybody repeat as champions in baseball and um you know there's not that many that do it in football basketball or hockey I let me let me say this the cowboys at the beginning of the year you had a record what well you had a what did i think it would yeah. be I figured, I mean, I thought they'd be good. So I was thinking like uh, a 11 and six or a 10 and seven okay, like okay. that. 
right? Okay. And then and then get into the playoffs, and then you know maybe with the experience that they've had before, um, that they would you know they and that's and look that's all still achievable mm-hmm. for this team. Okay, okay, that just because Mavericks, which sure the way you see them, man, where they at? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No. Hey, I, I'll tell you this, Nate. Right now, look, the Cowboys uh, are good enough, especially right. that defense, that if they get hot at the right mm. time of the year, you know, in January, late December, mm. January into February, they can go to the Super Bowl. Right. I mean, we've seen even though the 49ers knocked the dog out of the Cowboys, we've seen them pretty vulnerable since then. Haven't like we? I mean, more they've lost of them couple, than it did us. Right. Yes. Right. So they've been vulnerable. They've got weaknesses. Of course, the Eagles worry. I mean, they're right there in our division, but you get to go head to head with them twice yet. Right. right? right. So you've got an opportunity as the Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl, probably most importantly, depending on how the games with the Eagles go. Right. right? Right. So the Rangers are in the World Series. Cowboys could. It's not out of the question. Stars are off to a 4 0 and one start. Yes. They were in the co- you, Western you, Conference you Finals last so year. We could get- oh, yeah. I love my man Ludz. You know, right. Ludz works with us over here at the, at the network. Yeah. And so you got, the, and then the Mavericks, you know, I mean, look, the, uh, Shaq, I think it was. I think Shaq picked them to win it all. Man, no so less than Shaq. Is they going to play some defense this year for real? Or are they going to talk about it like they do every year? We want to play yeah, defense. Yeah. No, and a, they play mirror defense question. out there, you know? <laughs> they, they were they were trying to address that with the draft, and I believe they did. And this Derek Lively Jr., who's a, a 19-year-old, just a kid, uh, he's a you know he's a D guy. Right. There's a couple of D specialists that they picked right. up. So I think it's possible that they will addre- have addressed and will address that going forward but it's really going to be exciting to see what Luca and Kyrie can do when they get some time together and and if it doesn't work it's going to be um horrifying yeah, really. yeah, yeah. To be honest, this one you, of, the, right? one of these things where uh you put the to- you put the toast in the toaster but you don't put the minutes on it you just put it in there and if you get back in time it's right and if you don't it's all burnt up yeah <laughs> burnt up yeah that's it uh, yeah and that's like how do i fix this toaster well you got to throw it away that's, you can't fix toasters anymore right, right? you got to get a new toaster so <laughs> that's the problem they've got and i will say this a brilliant offseason move was that they didn't have to sign Kyrie to a max contract right. and and sort of tie themselves to him for a longer term they're with him for three years and i think i re- i think he's extremely motivated to make this thing work with Luca. And and Luca's so good that I think he's extremely motivated to um, make this work and finally let this team live up to sort of the promise of having him because there is a lot of promise when you have a guy hey, like Luca Doncic. Uh, and 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 I'm asking this with all sincerity. And uh, you know, uh, you know, you can get out there on my Twitter or X or whatever, and you can tell me as a fan, I ain't gonna respond, but you can tell is Luca. <laughs> is Luca coachable? I mean, seriously, is he yeah, is he it's, is he no, coachable? It's a, it's a very good question. It's a very good question. I believe he is coachable. I believe Jay Kidd's got a pretty good handle on him. But here's the here's maybe where you, you uh, sort of tweak your question, Nate. Yeah. Can other people play with him? Are they interested in playing with right. him? Right, and that's what we're going to find out from Kyrie. Kyrie is great. He's a top. He's certainly one of the best five point guards in the league. Right. So he is a great guard, right? So can you make it work with Luca? Because so far it hasn't worked with any of the other sort yes, of. I mean, yes. When they brought Kristaps Porzingis in here, I, the, the unicorn, I just thought, I thought oh my gosh, with I knew Luka? that was going to work. Oh yeah, and they couldn't. They couldn't. You know and. They didn't like each other much, and they couldn't make it work, right, wow. as good as both were. Now, we, we begin to see maybe Chris Stapps was more of a problem than we thought because he's on about his fourth team since then. So maybe <laughs> maybe heart. Chris Stapps was, was more a of a problem than we thought. <laughs> he's a unicorn. Uh, but anyway, but I do believe there's, a, there's a, a quiet narrative out there wondering, can Luca be that teammate? Can he be selfish? I mean, selfless enough to to make sure everybody's involved, and not only do they feel involved, 
but they are involved, A, and then B, can he show them that he trusts them? It's huge. It's huge in basketball. So that's going to be a telling thing for the Mavs this season, too. But uh, I'll tell you what, it's a pretty good time in Dallas-Fort Worth for sports with all these teams having this potential excuse. Yeah, and you know what? We may have to come back and get the uh, get the Cowboys. You know they got the Rams. They're three and four. Uh, you know yeah. as Aaron Donald leads that defense, and they got uh, Jonah Williams, a big number ninety two defensive end. Uh, they got a good linebacker in um, what's this kid name? Uh, Ernest Jones. So they they got a good squad. They don't give up much. They were hundred and about three hundred and thirty seven yards of offense and. 253 passing net and 112 or 17, somewhere in there rushing. Uh, uh, they've been pretty close in every game, you know, the, the Rams. But, you know, it's Matthew Stafford and uh, Sean McVay. He's going to have a system in place. He's going he gonna to be ready. Yeah. And Cooper Cup is back. And then this other kid, I can't even, yeah. I can't even pronounce his name, man. Uh, Paka Nakoa. That's uh, P-U-K-A. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's his first name, N A C U A. All respect, young man. Uh, I will work on it, and I will have it right by the time we go on the national broadcast this weekend. You know, <laughs> uh, but uh, this kid uh, called for seven hundred some yards, man. And uh, wow. now that Cooper Cup is back, uh, yeah, yeah, they got a. Yeah. Is Stafford is Stafford still that? Nate, he, I mean, obviously he, he's old. Stafford old still there, got on, you know? but he still think he's a gunslinger. Uh, he was fortunate yeah. to win the Super Bowl with all his interceptions. He got seven TDs, six interceptions. So you can get after him. They done gave up 18 sacks. They done sacked him 18 times. He can move, you know, but he is a pure passer, and he got that. He always had that wicked arm. And I mean, I don't know if it's as strong as it was when he first broke in the league, but his Stafford could throw, man. He's one I own here too from Texas. So uh by way yeah, of Georgia. He is Adam Park kid. Yeah. So Yeah. And so uh and then as far as the run game goes, you're talking about them allowing a buck seventeen a game in, in rushing. So can we can we expect maybe to, to see the run game? Uh, set the table as Mike McCarthy hopes it will with this Texas Coast offense. I just think that you have to give uh Rico Dottle some more touches. You know, don't mm-hmm. don't don't just wear Tony out. I mean, I understand that you know, don't let ten point million dollars dictate that he should be touching the ball more than twenty two times a game. That's pass and run together. Give Rico Dowd about seven or eight or nine more touches, man. I mean, and then if yeah, you know, I mean if he can't uh pick up the blitz and all of that right there, well go out and get you someone. Get you a veteran guy that can because uh, you're just gonna wear Tony out. I mean, uh, his 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 college and high school is telling you that he is the most dynamic player when used as a dual, or with a dual as another back and with a dual threat back that uh, accommodates him. Not the not not he's not a workhorse dude, and uh, mm-hmm. they should see that. They should go back and look and you know say hey, you know what? He was his best when he had somebody that. Uh, you know, you can start him the first series, but then the next two series, put Rico Dollar in there. Let him let him get at it. And then as as the game go on, trade in and out as you need different uh, looks and different styles. You know, so okay, I like that. And 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 look, get get Deuce McAllister involved some too, well, right? The, the thing you know? about it is, they got to find out what 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 Deuce can really do. And and uh, okay. I mean, see what what kind of overhyped people was uh, the fact that it was preseason and everybody was a mixed match of players. Our offensive line hasn't been playing that well. So we kind of need a hammer guy. You know, we need Mm -hmm. a hammer guy because our right tackle is uh, coming off ACL. Uh, Our right guard is banged up. Our center is banged up. Our left tackle is aging by the minute, and I love him to death, but he's aging. So, I mean, by the time we get off this show, he'll be like 85 years old, you know. (laughs) So, (laughs) uh, so, uh, they have a this this will be their third week together uh, playing as a a unit, and maybe they can be a little more cohesive. Maybe they can come up with a little better scheme for them, but our offense line has to play better in order to get our running backs going. 
you know, get them going. And if you can't, you get that Rico Dottles of the world is, you know, a guy that can hammer up in there with a run with some aggression. If we had just a little bit of offensive line play, uh, uh, that's where your boy Deuce would come in at because he can get back in there and hide. And I think I think you run draws with Deuce. Uh, uh, you do either a uh, draw so he can use all his quickness and speed, or you do quick hitting plays. You don't let nothing go slow with him. You don't let nothing. You if something going slow, it's a draw where he can sit there and look. Then he can go. You know, or you mm-hmm. just hit him off them corners real quick. But if you're trying to slow develop something. I lead too fast for that because they're seeing. Yeah. Once they seeing, all this quickness gone because they're they going to break down right on him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So one last thing before, because we got to go, but it's good. I love all this talk. We'll have to talk about um, the um, five of the next seven, I think it is. Mm. Finally, are at home. It seems like the Cowboys have hardly played at home That's this right. year. Five out of seven at home. They're going to need that, it. That helps them big time, doesn't it? <laughs> they're yeah. going to need yeah. it. They're going to need it with it being the Eagles and then coming up on Buffalo. And we don't know how Buffalo is going to be, you know, but we no. can't take the this game. We should dominate the Rams. And, and, and I ain't talking about score. I'm talking about just beat them. We should beat them because we're better than them. They have Donald on one side. They have Stafford on the other side with Cooper Cup and this, this young kid. Puka Nakua, boy, I hope I ain't missed that. Puka, man, hey, he, he a beast. Our, our, our secondary gonna get tested. This the people are not talking about it. Our secondary finna get tested because they have lost two running backs, and now they only got this Daryl Henderson Jr. and uh, Royce Freeman. They this 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 our secondary finna get tested, uh, Rad, for real. Because you can't just lock up on Cooper. All right, so yeah. Yeah. All right. So I lied. Here's one more question for you along those lines. <laughs> okay. Trade deadline. The trade deadline is Halloween, right? Next Tuesday. So what area do you believe the Cowboys most need to address if they're able to get somebody in a trade? They, the guy, the, the positions that I won't address, they can't afford them. Because I'm talking about if you go out and get these guys, these guys are going to require first round and maybe a third with that. Plus a big contract. I want one of the top uh, linemen in the league, offensive linemen in the league. I want one mm-hmm. of the top. Gotcha. So you can't afford that. Uh, you can go, yeah. you, you know, okay. we got linebackers. So, you know, you go out and just give up a four for a fifth for a linebacker. It's just wasting your time. And then if we go get a lineman, we, we ain't going to give up but a, 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 a four for a fifth. So we might as well play our rookies. We might as well play uh, TJ Bass and, uh, Awesome, uh, the awesome kid. I mean, that that's just the way. Because if you're not trying to get there, Rad, you know, you're, you, we're not the Eagles. I don't care what people say. We're not the Eagles. The Eagles have been there trying to get back there. So they they know that by going to get this 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 safety that they got from the Titans is going to put them over the top. You know, we 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 need some help. We need some some game changers. I mean, just going to get a guy to fill in, we we, we got enough of them. Unless you want to just uh, give up next year's draft and get one of them defensive tackles from uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> Jordan Davis <laughs> or Big Carter, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Give up the yeah. draft and yeah. go get one of them beasts, you know? Yeah. 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 And they and they ain't and Philly ain't trading them to Dallas. That's for dang sure. So you you got you got no prayer. Hey, it's been fun as always, Nate. I know we're gonna have a little more baseball to talk next week, and we'll we'll dive into you know won't won't be the bye week, right. so we'll have more to talk about the Cowboys, man. We thank Niagara for their sponsorship of the program, and uh, man, it's always fun doing this with you, Nate. Yeah, hey, man. And tell you what, Rad, we got to get you one of them toilets, man, so it can come up and wash your wash your honey. You know what I'm saying? They got them type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got them. That's, I, that's, I appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Right, yeah, yeah, let's work on that with Niagara. <laughs> you have a good All one, right. Raz, and thank you for doing the show. All right. Man.